Hello friends, thanks for stopping by. Today's video is highly requested and I think it's because so many of us are in the same boat. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am going to be 60 years old in November. I can't even believe that I am saying those words, 60 in November. Um, my heart and mind are nowhere near 60. So, but my body does tell me every now and then, and please don't misunderstand that I can't believe I'm saying that because I do know that many people do not get the opportunity to say, it's my birthday today, I'm 60 years old. I am grateful for every second of breath I have in my life. So please don't misunderstand when I say that. It's just that my heart, I think, is, is still 40, you know, and my mind might even be 12. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, today's video is about menopause. Now, I went through menopause later in life. I've only been in menopause, it will be three years in um, April of 2020. So um, I did go through perimenopause for probably about eight years. And uh, perimenopause for me was almost a breeze. I really, I didn't really experience a lot of the things like PMS, uh, that women get. I mean, I would get my, my share of PMS, but I didn't really start experiencing things until the last year of perimenopause, just before my body was starting to say, okay, we're, we're preparing for menopause now. This is what's going to happen. So I did prepare a little list here because I have been working on this for months because I wanted to remember ev absolutely everything that I went through and how many times I went to a doctor that told me it was all in my head or it's not part of menopause. It's you're stressed or you're this or you're that. And, um, you know, some of that could have been true, but not all of it, not all of it. Okay. Because there are things you just start to recognize and you say, what is going on? And then when you talk to other women or you start really researching deeply into something, you find out that we are not crazy. We are not nuts and we are not alone. There's a whole world of us out there. So I thought I would just go ahead. I don't want this video to drag on forever, but I'm going to really tell you everything that I noticed in my own life. Uh, the last year of perimenopause, I truly did start to notice a lot of things. Um, I did take black cohosh, which I feel during perimenopause really, really did help me out. I did try other things along the way, but the black cohosh seemed to help me with the mood swings that I started to notice. I became very emotional uh, over certain things. I mean, a, a, a commercial could be on television and I would just start boo-hooing uh, over the commercial. So um, the black cohosh did help me. I did not experience any night sweats or hot flashes during that time. Now in the last year of perimenopause, before I, I went into menopause, because you have to miss your cycle for one full year. And the year before that, I had missed it for seven or eight months and then it came back. So you have to start all over again. Okay. So what I did notice in the end when it was getting close, my body was saying, okay, it's time. We're done. Uh, the cycle became, uh, sporadic. It was no longer every 28 days. Uh, it also was almost non-existent some months and then other months it was incredibly heavy. So I knew something wasn't right. Of course I went to my gynecologist and you know, she says, well, I can do this or I can do that, but I really think it's just this happening to you. And I didn't want to go through any procedures if I didn't have to. So I said, no, I can, I can tough it out. So, um, then menopause came. Okay. So my first year of menopause, which happened, um, I went from April till April with no cycle. So I was in full menopause now. So that's my my last year of perimenopause, I started to just notice a cycle change, a little bit of mood swings, and a little bit of my, I was a little more sensitive when it came to emotions. Well, when menopause actually took place, um, I got, and many of you will know this because you've been on this journey with me for a very long time, um, I got hives really bad hives. I mean, hives that almost took over my life, my life every single day. 
for two years I had hives. It was unbearable. I didn't think I was going to be able, I, I even said to Lou, I, I can't live my, the rest of my life like this. I just can't. I was on all kinds of medications they were giving me. None of them were helping me. Um, I will tell you how to calm the hives a little bit. If you are a woman that's going into menopause and all of a sudden you are experiencing hives. Um, and I'm not talking little tiny hives. I'm going to insert pictures. This is what my body looked like on a daily basis for two years. Never did they hit my face ever. It, they didn't really happen on my arms. Uh, it was mostly all trunk and chest. So, I mean, I did videos back then with full blown hives all over me. It was un unbelievable. You have to keep yourself busy. You really do. But anyway, the way that I dealt with just those hives, um, I would have cold compresses. I would fill ice bags up with water. I would put a washcloth down on my skin, lay the ice on me to cool my skin down. I did buy cooling, a cooling mattress. I bought a cooling pillow. Um, I would take ice cold washcloths, wrap them around me. Uh, the, it, it seems that, um, I mean, when I went to the doctor, they told me it was all stress. Well, I, of course you're incredibly stressed when you are incredibly uncomfortable in your own skin. And that's where I was. So the hives, I do believe. And after researching for a very, very long time, I finally found on many different sites, list of things that, you know, can be considered part of menopause and hives do come up. I actually went to a uh, allergist, well-known one in our area, and he pretty much told me it was all in my own head. And I just thought, oh my goodness, I can't believe he's just telling me it's all in my own head. Or Long story short, hives can happen during menopause. Don't let anybody tell you that they cannot. And you just want to keep yourself as comfortable as possible. I, I did take a prescription that would help me sleep at night because if I didn't take it, I wasn't getting any sleep. So it was a very low dose. I think it, I want to say it was a, like an antidepressant, but a very low dose because I didn't want the weight gain that came with antidepressants. And I'm not a depressed person, so I didn't want to take them for that reason. So they promised me that it would be just a low dose just to take the edge off to make me sleep. So there is that route that you can go. Um, cold showers. I would take cold showers, oatmeal, oatmeal soaps, uh, heavy, thick creams. I used everything and anything that said to help itching, uh, all of it. And nothing ever helped me. They would just make me a little bit more comfortable. But once they would ramp up and they were there all day with me, but once my body would start to relax and settle down in the evenings, they would just come out like a vengeance with a vengeance. They were horrible. So, uh, hives are a part of it. So there is something that you can do. Uh, I suggest you, hi I highly suggest you see a doctor so that you, they can give you some sort of medication to get your sleep because without sleep, you aren't going to be able to function. And uh, I hope that none of you ever get the hives that I got. Okay, the next thing I noticed is joint pain. I never had any joint pain. I now have joint pain. Keep in mind that some of these things can come with age, but many of them also come with menopause. So don't let somebody just tell you, oh, you're old, because what if you're only 40 years old? You're not old, and you've gone through menopause. Pause. You're not old. You're not old. So it's not in our heads, lady, okay? So joint pain, I would get out of bed in the morning. It's gotten much better now as the years have gone on. It's not as bad. I still have some wrist problems and I have a couple of other issues that we'll talk about. <laughs> but the joint pain, I would get up out of bed in the morning. The bones in my feet would hurt so bad. I would think, what is going on? My hips hurt so bad. I could barely move at times. My suggestion to you is keep moving because the more you move, the better off you are when you have joint issues. Unless, of course, you can't. So the stiffness and the joint ache is something that comes possibly with menopause, okay? I kept uh, on a, a light exercise routine. I just kept walking. I did some yoga stretches. And the doctor will tell you, you can take a leave. <clears throat> okay, the next thing is easy because everyone pretty much experiences this, except for some women are very lucky and they don't have any symptoms of menopause. But weight gain comes with menopause. I never had a belly. I now have a belly. I never had ch chunks on my hip. I now have these chunks on my hip. I've always had 
problems with my inner thighs being a little bit big. It's a genetic thing. But now I carry a little bit more weight in that area. It is a struggle to get weight off. When I was perimenopause, I would gain a little weight, but I could easily get it off. It is not so easy anymore. So you have to keep moving. You have to really, you know, look at what you're eating. Look at the foods you're eating. If your diet is fast food, processed foods, um, just greasy fried foods, you're going to have a problem. And let me tell you youngins, you youngins, <laughs> If that's what your diet is, clean it up before you go into menopause. Clean it up just for your heart, but clean it up before you go into menopause because look at your mother. Whatever your mother experienced for the most part with menopause, you probably will too. You may That's not a given, but you can pretty much look at your mother or your father's side, whatever, and see what their bodies look like after menopause and age and you can see where your struggles are gonna be. I can look at my sisters, I can look at my, my mother when she was alive, and I knew where I was going to struggle. And it is in all the places that my mother did, because genetically, that's how we are built. So for you young girls, uh, before you go through menopause, you might wanna clean up your diet, because it really does make a difference, all right? So, clean up your diet, really take a look at what you're eating. Look at the foods you're choosing. I have a very clean diet and I'm still struggling with weight. But on the weekends, Lou and I will have a pizza or maybe we'll have two bad meals out of the whole week. Uh, I have to just cut back on that because it's not working for me anymore. So I have to clean up my diet. We have to move. And sometimes, no matter what we do, if your gut isn't healthy, you're not going to be able to lose weight. Anyway, because the gut, gut controls everything. It's a brain gut, brain gut. They go, it's called, I think the, what it's called, the vagus or the vargus nerve or something that goes from the brain into the colon. So it's a connection. So get the gut healthy. If you don't understand what that means, Google it. How do I get my gut healthy? Because if you're somebody who is really putting an effort in and you just can't get it together with weight loss, check into your gut situation, okay? So it's not necessarily about eating less, it's about making the right choices, and we have to continue to move, okay? Uh, flab distribution, amazing, amazing, how the flab just, again, this could be with age, but it's amazing how it changes the minute you go through menopause. It's like, hello, belly, never had fat in my belly area, ever. Ever. I'm not a person that's just been naturally lean my whole life. I've had to always work at it, but it was always easy, easier for me to lose when I would gain the five. Now it's not so easy, but now the distribution, it goes in the arms, it goes in the thighs. It, it's not, it, it doesn't just spread over evenly. So you still look okay, just like yourself, just a layer bigger. It, it deposits in your belly, in your thighs, in your butt, in your arms. So, so with me, uh, the fat distribution really did come into play, especially in my belly area. The next thing you might notice is headaches. Now, I never got headaches, ever. Now, I don't get severe headaches like some women get, but a lot of women will start having migraine headaches once they start or once they go into menopause. So uh, headaches definitely could be. You will next thing, mood swings. You may become more sensitive. Um, it's all real. It's all real, my friends. You do have to try to make your family understand. Now, I'm very fortunate. Lou, I've never really talked about anything Lou does, but Lou is a specialist. He's a physician. So I am very lucky that he understands the body. He knows what we're going through. Sometimes I look at him and I'll just say, I'm so sorry. And he says, Tammy, this is not who you are. I know who you are as a human being. I know what you're going through. It's okay. And I'm just really fortunate that way because I know, I know that relationships fall apart during menopause. I know that, you know, the intimacy level changes because it's very, it's incredibly painful for some women. I know these things happen, so I'm very, very, very fortunate that I have a very understanding partner. So try to help them understand what you're going through. Really, you're not crazy. You shouldn't have to do it alone. And if you truly have someone, people that love you in your life, they will understand if you try to help them understand. Talk about okay. sleepless nights. Oh yeah, you're gonna have a couple of sleepless nights. Yes, you are. Oh, I've had a few. And I don't even know how we function sometimes. I mean, some nights I go to bed at a norm, our normal time, 
Lou does his thing, I read, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm tired, kiss him goodnight, and then I just lay my head down, I fall asleep for two seconds, and then I'm awake, wide awake, my friends, wide awake, and uh, I'm up roaming the house. If I, I mean, didn't I make noise, I would probably start vacuuming, doing laundry, all that stuff, but usually I come back here, and I just play around in makeup, and I put together video ideas and stuff like that, but I'm up all night. And Lou will say to me, you need to try to get a nap. Well, I'm not a napper. I've never been the type of person that comes home and says, whew, I need me a good nap. I'm going to take a nap. But if you can nap, nap. You're going to need it. So the sleepless nights, oh, yeah. And then that contributes to your cortisol levels because you're all stressed. And that's going to give you even more body fat. Yeah, it is. Uh-huh. Yeah, cortisol level, mm, not good if you're a person that has a lot of stress in your life or you haven't slept for days. Um, it, it just... It's, it accumulates more belly fat. That's all it does. So you have to try to keep your stress levels down. And uh, I used to do high intensity interval training. I don't do those anymore because that's a signal to my body that there's stress. So I've even calmed that down because I, I need to get rid of the cortisol. And they can check your cortisol levels. I, I've never had mine checked, but I just might. Anyway, hot so, flashes, oh yeah, they're real. Don't let anybody tell you they're not. A hot flash, you've seen me have them here right on camera. I'll, all of a sudden, my face will just get soaking wet. But you can be fine one moment. And then the next moment, it's like from your toes all the way up to your head. It's just a raging fire. You have to strip yourself naked. So I suggest layering your clothing. Don't wear heavy clothing anymore. Layer your clothing so you can take the jacket off if you get too hot. And also, I became very sensitive to certain fabrics because I was always having a hot flash, which means you sweat, then the clothes make you itch. So you might have to change your fabrics a little bit there too. Uh, okay, brain fog. Yes, brain fog is real, my friends. One moment you'll be talking about something, you'll stop and think, what am I talking about? You'll walk into a room and say, what am I here for? Now, if you're forgetting where you parked your car or you're forgetting who your spouse is or you're forgetting you know, where you are, that's totally different and you need to seek help for that. But when you're mid-sentence and you're like, what was I saying? Uh, good thing I can stop and go with this camera because many times it happens to me and then I'm like, what was I saying? I should do a blooper roll of that. It would be hilarious. But anyway, uh, brain fog is real, but I'm here to tell you the brain fog gets better. I actually noticed more brain fog in that last year of perimenopause to menopause. And I still have a little bit of brain fog, but it has gotten much better. And a friend actually said that I was talking to her. She was a couple years ahead of me. And I was talking to her and I said, oh my God, it's like I'm losing my mind. I think I might be getting Alzheimer's or something. So you will question yourself at times, but um, for the most part, the brain fog does go away. And you have to find time for yourself to really just help calm yourself, just help to really make this transition a better one for you. Okay, so let's talk about skin changes because you, if you're like me, you're going to see some skin changes. I've always had dry skin, but now I am beyond dry. My feet crack, my fingers, my fingernails are dry and brittle. My skin is getting crepey and you know, sometimes it just really looks horrible. And uh, I think my body skin is suffering more than my facial skin. Uh, but you will, you can notice some people, all of a sudden they'll start getting acne. They never had acne, now they have acne. They had it as a child, they haven't had it their whole adult life. They go through menopause and bang, the acne's back. So you can also experience a lot of skin changes. Uh, I have to, I'm guilty of really loving hot showers. I have to adjust the water to be cooler. Uh, I've taken away all sulfates. I don't wash with anything that has sulfates in them. I try really hard to just use a lot of products that really do hydrate the skin. And cutting back in the hot water is really a big deal. The next thing that is a possibility, you may experience anxiety attacks. I have never ever, ever experienced anxiety in my life, ever, until menopause. Now, and it's only when I'm sleeping. Every now and then, and when I say anxiety attacks, it's not like I'm afraid to leave the house or anything like that, or be in public buildings or be with a, a large group of people. For, for me, the anxiety presents itself as an adrenaline rush. 
it's just like I get this incredible, really hard adrenal, adrenaline rush that goes throughout my whole body and my skin hurts while it's happening. That's how um, I, don't, I don't get palpitations or anything with it. I just get this adrenaline rush that really causes my skin to be super sensitive only for the moments that I'm having that anxiety attack. But those don't happen a lot uh, while I'm awake. I have them while I'm sleeping. So I can be sound asleep and Lou might still be reading or doing whatever he's doing and all of a sudden I will just start choking in my sleep and bolt up and sit. And he's like, you were just sleeping so soundly and that's how it happens, boom. I'm just up and I have a full blown adrenaline rush going on. And I've been to the doctors for it. They have no idea what it is, none. So, and I don't have them every single night. And I will tell you, since I purchased the weighted blanket, I am having less and less and less of them. Um, also, also, once I transitioned into full menopause, I started having nightmares. I would cry and scream in my sleep and Lou would have to wake me up. And uh, I would go right back to sleep, but I would have these incredible, I mean, horrible dreams, absolutely. And I never had bad dreams, ever. Now I have bad dreams. With the weighted blanket, those two have gone away. I don't have bad dreams anymore since I bought that weighted blanket. It's only 12 pounds, and you can buy them even heavier. Like if you're a heavier person, you might need a heavier blanket. But um, I, you can buy them at Walmart, you can buy them at Target, you can buy them online. And yes, they are a full blanket and we're already suffering from night sweats and being overly hot, but I just put a sheet between me and that blanket and that's what I sleep with. And I leave the window open uh, when it's cool and uh, I have the air conditioner down really low. Poor Lou, Louie, he's freezing to death. Uh, but he just throws another blanket on himself because I can't sleep if the room is warm. So um, again, he's very understanding. All right, so let's see, I already talked about my nails. Food sensitivities. You can experience food sensitivities once you go into menopause. I am now. Uh, things that I have eaten for years, however, this can happen at any point in your life. You don't have to be in menopause. But for years, I have eaten some of the, the foods that I have loved every single day. And now I can't eat them, they're causing reflux. That's I think that's another thing with menopause, my reflux has gotten even worse. I used to be able to control it. I can't even control it now. So uh, I am seeing a doctor about that. We're going to check me. She's going to do a little biopsy and check me for gluten sensitivity because I do not have celiac disease. So um, I'll keep you posted on that. But uh, you may notice that if you're a person that never had reflux, now you have reflux and you have a clean diet. Now, if you have a bad diet, you might get it. So for uh, food sensitivities, the only thing you can really do is the elimination diet. You can eliminate things out of your diet and then slowly reintroduce them. Like I love oatmeal and I use gluten-free oatmeal and I have always loved oatmeal and I can't eat it anymore. I would eat it hot, I would eat it overnight oats. I loved it. I can't eat it anymore. It gives me such bad reflux. Certain foods I love, we, we eat, um, we don't eat regular white pasta, but we we made the change years ago to whole wheat pasta. I can't eat that anymore, or I'm up all night with horrible, horrible restless leg syndrome. So there's something going on with the wheat, I'm sure of it, okay? All right, so um, if you start to have um, problems with foods, try the elimination, try eliminating some things out of your diet to see if it helps you. Uh, another thing is, is a lot of women will become lactose intolerant after menopause. And that came from a gynecologist, not from any research that I was uh, looking through. That actually came from a gynecologist. And another thing, and this came from a urologist, uh, women can also start to experience urinary tract infections uh, even if you've never had them in your life, once you go through menopause and the skin starts to change down there and it thins and the lubricants are different and the estrogen's not there, all kinds of things come into play. Like I said, I'm not a doctor, but uh, you, can become, you can start having urinary tract infections. So for that, it's good to up your take of probiotic foods. It's also good to up your t intake of prebiotic foods 
and also to take a good cranberry supplement. I wouldn't drink the juice, but I would take a supplement that may help you. Using things like the sweet spots to wash or the good love to wash that I talk about all the time. I can't say the uh, V word anymore or they'll demonetize my videos. Uh, it's interesting to me that you can come on and swear like crazy. You can be half naked, but you can't say a part of the body or you get demonetized. So I can't say that anymore. So I will just say the V area, but the V area does change a lot. So by using uh, pH balance products in that area is better for you than using your dial deodorant soap or any perfume scented uh, wash that you might find uh, in, you know, on the shelves of your grocery store. I would give them a try as well. Uh, lubricants, you are going to experience V dryness, V itching, and V odor. Not all three, many but women do. And also for V intimacy, you are going to experience a severe dryness, almost like razor blades. So do not be embarrassed to walk into the store or order online uh, lubrication. Do not. There are several. The sweet spot I was talking about is here. Uh, this is a lubricant. This is by Good Love. We should not be embarrassed, ladies. We should not. We are entitled to a good, happy life, and being intimate is part of it. So um, look into uh, a lubricant. The Necessary makes one. They're all natural, all pH balanced. And I know a lot of people, these might be things you're thinking, oh, this is ridiculous. This is silly. But not if you get urinary tract infections, it, it's, it becomes an issue. So uh, always you know, look into washes that are made specifically for that area, wipes that are specifically made for that area, wiping front to back, also going to the bathroom after intimacy. These are all very, very important. Um, you can go to the, you can get your regular old KY jelly. For V itching, there is always Vagisil. I don't really like this, but uh, you know, they, the doctors do suggest it. There is also a prescription strength. It's called S Trace Cream. This you would put in the V area, and this will help um, with the uh, intimacy. Uh, you just, I think you put a dab on. I won't, I use, won't it. use it because I read, and there is a risk of ovarian cancer with it. And ovarian cancer runs in my family, as does breast cancer. That's why I do not take any type of a hormone replacement therapy, be it prescription or Suzanne Summer route. I don't take anything because four doctors that know my body very well say I am not a candidate. So that's why I don't take them, but I am not here to tell you whether you should take them or not, but I am here to tell you that nobody knows your body better than your gynecologist and you. Please don't just listen to people on YouTube and say, well, that person is qualified, whatever. They are very qualified in their field, but they are not familiar with who you are. And they would agree with me 100%. So make sure that you take whatever you learn from someone that you're watching or reading from and take it to your doctor. And because he knows your history or she knows your history, they will be able to tell you what is best for you. I, like I said, cancer is a high risk and vascular problems. I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to tough it out. And I'm just here to tell you there are ways to get through it without all of that. There are other things in the store that you can look into. Again, I would talk to your doctor about these. I do not use these. I'm just showing them to you. This is the Internal Harmony, and this is the Progesterone Cream and it is a natural progesterone, and it also has vitamin D in there, black cohosh, maca, chasberry, and some other things in there. And I got that at a health food store. And, and there is also the wild jam uh, gel that many use. You can also get a book from Christine Northrup that will give you the basics, but she doesn't touch on any of the things like hives. There's no hives in here. There's nothing on hives. Um, it's, it's a good understanding of the female body and what's happening. So um, it's, uh, I'm sure she has newer books. This is an old one. Uh, so just things to keep in mind. Another uh, thing that has happened to me um, is uh, when I was going through the perimenopause stage into menopause, my vertigo got really bad, really bad in that year until my first year. My vertigo was really bad. Now it is... I've balanced out and I'm not having 
any problems, knock on wood. Um, but, you know, those things can happen. Uh, a lot of them could be age-related, but I'm not going to rule out that some of these things did not happen to me because of menopause. And I think as women, we need to open the door to conversation because so many women are suffering. Um, I know this video isn't going to be received well by everyone, but if I just help one or two of you to know that, okay, I'm not crazy, this happened to another woman, then my job is done here, okay? There are things that happen to us during menopause, and there are things that we have to become more aware of after menopause, and cardiovascular health is one. So always see a doctor if you feel anything, and you know, keep a good exercise routine and eat well. Eat well, my friends, you are so worth it. You don't have to have organic. If you can afford organic, go organic. If you can't, you can still eat well. Uh, we have breast and ovarian uh, health. You Make sure you're scheduling your regular appointments for mammograms and your gynecologist. Uh, we become higher risk for stroke and dementia. So every little thing that we can do, researching, being aware, helps us. You know, just living a good, clean, healthy lifestyle can help us get through menopause and the rest of our life. All right, my friends, so start the conversation. Let us know what you're going through with menopause. What, how old were you when you went through menopause? How long have your symptoms lasted? Um, do you have people in your family that started when they were in their 50s and at 80, they're still having hot flashes? Because some people think, oh, this is going to be over soon. No, 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 no. Some women have hot flashes for the rest of their lives after they go through menopause. Some women have night sweats. Some women continue to have all the symptoms. Other women have nothing. They experience not one hot flash or not one night sweat, nothing. So it's a it's a different journey for each and every one of us. All right, my friends, so leave me, uh, let me know in the comments what you use to help yourself through menopause. Uh, you know, do you use certain things for intimacy? Uh, are you on HRT? How has it worked for you? Just start the conversation below, my friends, all right? Everything that I showed here will be listed and linked below for you so that uh, you, got, you can go and research the products that I'm talking about. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. I would love to have you as an ageless beauty. Uh, make sure that you hit that bell notification so you are made aware of all of the videos that I am putting up. And until the next time, my friends, go out in the world and be happy, healthy, beautiful, and most of all, my friends, lovable. I love you all. Bisous.